Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to kick off a new theme this week, that being infectious grooves. Songs that just make you want to bob your head to them. Just, you gotta move your body along with the music. Today we're going to be checking out Gojira, which is a pretty good pick for this theme. We're looking at the song Ouroboros off of the The Way of All Flesh album. Let's dive into this and see what, uh, what is this group? Gojira is bringing to the table today. We have, uh, we're in 3-4, and we have two bars of movement, and then two bars of just, just this bouncing back and forth of these two notes. Base holds are really neat too. <laughs> the extension of it, plus the metric modulation. So the extension there, it bumps us up from 12 beats, I think to 16. The digital vocals off to the right are really interesting layered alongside that harsh delivery. like the ride symbol work here. I gotta see a drum cam of this track. Just for that section right there. We had a pitch shift, but we didn't come in hard like I was expecting. the fast hammer on stuff going on in the background underneath all of this still.
Oh, not this. I had a different revelation. We'll touch on it in a second, though. So that's more of a transition than anything else. Okay. All right, so that revelation that I had right there, the core riff, the one that's super memorable, the fast hammer-ons and pull-offs that eventually ends up just being two notes bouncing back and forth over and over again. What's going on with that? Well, I think it has to do with the Ouroboros, which is what the title of the track is. The snake eating its own tail, the infinity loop of that. Because at some point, here's the thing, right? So I counted out that riff at the beginning. Four bars of three beats gives us a 12-beat phrase. It does that usually, but not exclusively. There are some sections where that fourth bar gets, well, not the fourth bar. I mentioned it happens in two halves where the first two bars or the first six beats have movement to them, a rising and falling idea. And then the last six beats are the ones that are super repetitive. Uh, we just have the two notes back and forth over and over and over again. That back half is sometimes extended. Sometimes a little bit where it feels like we're only doing another bar's worth of repetition, but there was a time in the middle of the track when we came back to it and it went on for quite some time. I think we got up to 20 beats. Now that's not divisible by three. I think once we hit 12, we shifted to 4-4 four, four, uh, and we pulled in another two bars of that. I'm not 100% sure on that because by the time I recognized what was going on, we, I never had another chance to test my hypothesis on that. But it was really interesting to, to hear that. And as the song goes on, the repetitions of these get longer. They're just the two bars at the beginning of the track. By the middle of the track, we have one that's two bars and then two bars of four instead of two bars of three. So I wonder if maybe this continues on. I wish I had picked up on this theme, this motif earlier. I would have been able to see if any of these repetitious elements are even lengthened as we get towards the end of the track. Because like I said, the last time I really remember it uh, popping up is the middle of the track. But yes, the, the, this idea of, of cycle, of infinity, of this constant loop is baked right into that, that main riff right there. I really dig that. I, I think it's cool. It started off being a bit annoying for me, <laughs> the hyper repetition going on, but I came around to it. I think it's a pretty slick riff and I, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, this is called Groove Week, so... Is this song groovy? Yeah, checks out. 10 out of 10. Moving on. Just kidding. <laughs> we have to talk about rhythms and drums. Um, right from the start of the song, I think we were only like 30 seconds in, and I immediately pointed out symmetric modulation on the drums, where uh, maybe the, well, we have the constant, yeah, those are 16th notes. We have the constant 16th notes coming out of the, uh, the guitars and that's a really rigid showcasing of, of the beat four hits for every beat the drummer though tosses some wild stuff out we had triplets at one time I don't even know what the other modulation was I think it was dotted quarter notes at one time uh, just a lot of ways of playing against the beat not necessarily changing up things that can still emphasize the beat um, such as, you know, if we're doing four hits per beat, and then those, those are 16th notes, we shift to eighth notes, 
that's still da 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 da. It still has an emphasis on the beat. We just change up the subdivisions between the beats. But when you start doing dotted quarter notes or anything a bit more syncopated like uh, triplets, anything like that, we can start getting emphasis that is off of the beat, between the beats even. Um, and that's where the drummer really starts to excel is when they push against um, the standard uh, breaking down of things in half, uh, where we have half notes, whole notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, of always breaking down the subdivision evenly, and now we start grouping things into larger ideas of odd numbers. And the drummer is just an absolute beast at this. I think I knew that. I think I've talked about this drummer and their polyrhythmic ways before. <laughs> this isn't the first Gojira track we've checked out. But uh, it just, it's a real strong showcase here. Not consistently, but when the drummer does choose to deviate from that core pulse into something else, absolutely nails it. And we had three or four good showings of that throughout this song, too. So, yeah, the, the drummer's just awesome. And even when they're not playing polyrhythmically, we still have some really cool ideas, like that ride cymbal concept in the bridge and the playfulness on that. Sometimes it was closer to the edge of the ride, sometimes in the middle, sometimes right up on the bell. Not really getting the bright tinginess of hitting the bell itself, but uh, definitely getting a bit more of that pointed narrow sound that you're not going to find near the edge of the ride cymbal. Um, and bouncing around all of these areas, just like dancing around this, this cymbal. In really cool metric ways alongside the constant 16th notes I think we had on the bass kicks and the snare accent was on it, uh, the first beat of every bar, wasn't it? Maybe it was three, but I, I remember it was one strike per bar. It was either on beats one or three. Uh, but yeah, really rigid stuff underneath with this super dancey stuff on top. Absolutely lovely section. Uh, it was just phenomenal. Greatly enjoyed that. But on the concept of groove in general, this is something that we talked about. We've done Groove Week before. And one thing that I brought up during it was that, to me, groove typically associates with syncopation. And uh, there were a couple of people who disagreed with me. And they're like, no, you could have groove with rigid uh, rhythmic, rhythmic structure and I was like yeah I guess you can but like I don't ever really feel like I attach to that as well I think this is a super good super good I'm so good at talking today this is a great example of using a more rigid rhythmic structure to create heavy groove the guitars have a constant rigid 16th thing going on the drums are either laying down quarter notes or eighth notes on the bass kick, sixteenth notes on the bass kicks uh, sometimes, and the snare is quite frequently just on one and three, or one or three. Um, but very rigid ideas uh, and static ideas of rhythm, and yet the song ends up feeling super groovy. I think some of that comes down to accent points. That is to say, if you're going to play constant 16th notes, not all four hits that you play per beat is going to have equal weight. So you can have and have that emphasis on the first of each pocket of four, and that's going to create a pulse too, and the pulse is really important to groove. And that's not to say that there's no syncopation in here. I just talked about some cool uh, stuff that the ride symbol has going on with it during the bridge, but I just feel like it's not as uh, focused upon. The areas where we deviate from the rigidity are, are punctuating moments. A lot of the drum fills and their metric modulation lean into this. So I, I thought it was very cool that, you know, I'm grooving along, and I'm thinking about the rhythm, and I'm like, dude, this is just straight eighth notes. This is so groovy, though. <laughs> And it made me think, this was like two years ago, and I, I vividly remember some of these comments calling me out on it, and uh, yeah, this is just a really solid example of that, and I think that's awesome. Now, I really like the vocals in here, not necessarily the harsh vocals, I've never really been a big fan of uh, his style of harshes, I find it impressive and definitely unique. I think there are very few people who can get this level of grit and compression while still, 
I, I can still hear his voice, his vocal cords going. I can hear a, a semblance of a melody to his vocal delivery, but dude, it sounds like a false chord growl. So I, I've, I've always been enamored by that. I think he has a very unique sound and there's nobody I'm going to get confused with. If this dude does side projects, I'm immediately going to think, oh, that's the Gojira vocalist. It's like it's like uh, Jonathan Davis's vocals from Korn. You just you don't get them mixed up with anybody else. They're a very unique sound within, uh, you know, this this genre of music. But they're not really my cup of tea. I haven't quite figured out, you know, really what the thing is about the vocals, but they've always impressed me more than I've enjoyed them. But I liked what happened here. During the verses, we have this digitization, uh, a vocal that's pushed off to the side, pushed down in the mix. It is nowhere near as prominent as the lead harsh vocals, but it adds this robotic element to it. So we not only have that big compression I talked about with a little bit of his, his natural timbre in there, but we also have this digital perfection this just solid, perfectly in tune notes. Not quite uh, to the level of, of the ridiculous auto tune that you can hear in some songs, um, but definitely something that feels like it's had a lot of pro post processing put on it. It feels digital. And I really like the way that all three of these timbres come together to form the vocal sound in the verses. There's also, I think towards the end of the bridge, was it? Maybe it was the beginning of the outro. That I had mentioned that we added some uh, pure cleans underneath the, the growls there too. And I really like the way that they got layered up. I, I, I really like layering harshes with cleans. I think it always sounds cool. Uh, but here, again, he just has such a unique harsh that I'm really glad I got to hear it alongside his cleans too. Uh, and it adds so much character and clarity and color to the harsh vocal too, that I think it puts the song uh, on a high note, allows it to end um, at a peak that we hadn't heard previously. There's also a theme here of the robotic sound that is background becoming a clean, natural acoustic sound that's now in the background. I don't know if that has anything to do with what the lyrics are about. I can't find any way to tie that back to the Ouroboros concept, but it is something that I, I can't ignore. The the robotic background vocals aren't there the whole song. They get replaced towards the end. So, yeah. I don't know if there's anything else I have to add to this. The bass is sick. Uh, the guitar lick is iconic, I think I could call it. Uh, it's definitely one of those, those riffs that get stuck in your head for a very long time. <laughs> Uh, and even if you've forgotten it, all it takes is the opening couple of seconds of this and you're immediately snapped back. Oh yeah, this is Ouroboros. Yeah, this is that riff. It's one of those things that I don't think you're going to easily forget. It does not blend into the general conversation of metal. It, it stands out, much like his vocals do. But uh, aside from that one riff, I thought the guitars, I mean, they do what they do. They're big, they're heavy, they're chunky. Um, and they create a lot of weight. Gojira is just a heavy band uh, a lot of the time. So they definitely fill that role very well. So with all of that said, let me dive into some lyrics and see what's going on there. All right, so this song is really neat, actually, from a lyrical standpoint. It speaks about a spiritual element of the life and death structure. It comes to the conclusion that a soul is everlasting, calls it uh, something along the lines of a phoenix rising from the ashes, uh, the firebird, the cycle of life regenerating the cell. It says that life burns fierce and then is reduced to ash, resurrection from the flame, an ageless process, quest for absolution, self-consuming womb, ever-present, meet no end. This idea that life is a cycle continues to cycle forever. As the phoenix will always find itself reborn, so too will the soul, the spirit. But that this clashes with how we understand death as mortals, especially if you ascribe to a more 
uh, scientific view of it, that there is no existence after death. You just become the stardust from whence you came. And uh, he tries to find comfort in this, that through meditation and understanding and spirituality, we can find that death doesn't exist in the state that we sort of understand it to be, uh, the end of a life. It says that death is an illusion. It asks us to remember the everlastingness, the cycle of death and rebirth, putting it into the loop rather than a straight line. And so verse 3 is all about trying to find that meditation. It says, I'm counting down the days, but I'm dying, growing up with impatience, I'm falling down. On the peaks of radiant mountains, the truth is growing before me, my attention fixed on this silence, rediscovering life while I'm breathing, designing the shape of material, frozen icon, distant reminder. Mankind has forgotten the gateways by the mouth of the serpent regenerates. It says that we've lost something by not uh, engaging with the spiritual side. We're, we're missing the information that we have known. All the rebirths before us, we should have been able to connect with them. And through metaphorically climbing these radiant mountains, going to the peak, viewing this greatness and coming to terms with our spiritual side, we can regain this knowledge that we have forgotten. Yeah, I think it's an interesting song. And like I said, I like that the musical motif there of the repeating idea is itself a loop, a very short loop, as life kind of is in the grand scheme of things. When you think about the billions of years that this planet has been around, the hundreds of years that people live, it's a very short cycle. I said hundreds of years. No, the hundred years that most people live. Uh, it's a very short cycle in the grand scheme of things. And so just utilizing two notes to jump back and forth between, I think, uh, is really great at creating this concept of the Ouroboros while also tying it into the concept of rebirth uh, and resurrection of the endless cycle. And of course, expanding that two-note loop out even longer throughout the song to create uh, a lengthening of the cycle. Yeah, I like it. It all sort of comes together in a neat little way. All right, those are my thoughts on Gojira's Ouroboros. What did you think of this track? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just have your own opinions about it, your own perspective and interpretation. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. We do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to keep moving on with these infectious grooves. That'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.